So what do y'all do when the weather gets cold outside? Naturally, the answer is hot pot. So I thought it would be really cool now that the weather outside is super chilly to do um, actually a video on hot pot. And uh, when I was a student in Taiwan, I used to I used to go out with friends like every day for hot pot. Like I'm not sure how healthy it was, but it was it was such a fun um, event. And for those of you who have never heard of hot pot before, essentially what it is um, is it's it's a very communal activity, um, and you everybody kind of crowds around this pot of boiling soup, and usually they're they're different flavors. So you can have like the herbal kind, you can have the spicy kind. Um, some types of soups are really creamy, and you have a bunch of these other kind of like side things. So it could be like tofu's, it could be meats, it could be vegetables, it can be mushrooms. And the idea is that all of these like foods are kind of either like meats, they're sliced really thin, or some of the foods are kind of like par cooked. And really the idea is that you can take all of these things that are really easily cooked, dip it in the hot pot liquid that has, you know, all those amazing flavors in it and really quickly cook it, take it out. And then, you know, you can, you can eat as you cook as it were. It's quite fun because everybody is around the table and you kind of like pick your favorite uh, foods and then you can kind of put it in. Today I was lucky enough because I was able to borrow this um, this hot pot pan from a friend and it's it's one of those dual ones so you can have two different flavors of soups. I thought that I would show you guys how to make two of my favorite hot pot soups because essentially that is the main part of the cooking that we're doing today right because everything else is sort of like dip and eat and really have fun so the first soup that i'm going to make is a little bit more traditional and it's kind of the uh, herbal soup base so there's going to be like red jujube dates in there there's going to be mushrooms there's vegan meat broth uh, scallions and ginger so that one is going to kind of be your basic type broth my second one is actually a soy milk broth and uh, maybe a lot of you guys haven't tried this before because I, I only recently tried it when I was um, in London But essentially what it is is it's soy milk mixed with some kind of like a salty kind of fermented bean paste And you end up with this like really kind of rich Thicker mouth feel that you know, you can add all of your other ingredients in and it just gives you like a whole different um, Kind of like flavor and a whole different kind of mouth feel so uh, I'm really excited to show you guys that and also for those of you who do not want to, you know, waste time and make your own broth, you just want to get to the fun part right away. I have, uh, there are these prepared uh, soup bases for hot pots. So Lee Kum Ki does one um, like this. They have um, one that is a soup base for Sichuan hot and spicy hot pot. And this one um, happens to be vegan. So this is something where you don't have to mess with any other ingredients. You can just put this in with some water, get this up to a boil, and then you're, you're ready to go and you're ready to uh, be cooking some hot pot. So what we're gonna do today, I'm going to show you the two different types of broths first, and then I will show you guys kind of the categories of hot pot delicacies um, that you can find inside any uh, kind of hot pot shop. In addition, obviously, because you're doing this at home, you can include stuff like, you know, seitans or soy meats or whatever uh, that you want. Okay, so these are going to be the easiest soup bases ever. Um, I have about five cups of a vegetable or like a vegan pork broth. I have some goji berries in there. Um, these are some jujube dates, which I love because they add a nice sweetness to it and I kind of tear them apart just so that you get more flavor from it. So some ginger, some scallions, um, white pepper, and then for the salt, you do want to add a fair amount of salt to this, and this is to your own liking, but remember that you might want to try and over salt it a little bit, just because this will flavor um, everything else. So uh, around 20 minutes on a simmer, and then this guy is good to go. Thank you. 
this next broth is so creamy and delicious, you guys have to try it. Um, I have three cups of either a vegetable or a vegan meat broth. And then to that, I'm gonna add two cups of unsweetened soy milk. And um, try to, you know, try to make sure that it's a good quality soy milk because um, the thicker it is, it'll help with uh, the texture of this broth as well. This is some tahini which will build up on that texture. I have some mirin for sweetness. And then Lee Kum Ki has this crushed kind of a yellow bean sauce that's quite savory and it reminds me just a little bit of um, miso as well. So once this broth comes to a boil, this guy is good to go. And just remember to season it with salt to your liking and remember that a little bit uh, saltier is actually a good thing. Okay, so after the soup, onward to the fun part. I'm gonna show you guys the different categories that you can typically pick. Uh, these are going to be my favorite vegetables that I usually eat at Hot Pot. So this is the vegetable spread. I have some corn, I have taro, I have pumpkins. I have different kinds of Chinese greens as well and some baby corn. But corn is my absolute favorite. I think it adds just like such a nice bite to it. Um, the thing that you do have to realize for hot pot and those that go often uh, will know this is you have to time your things well, right? So to know that you know certain root vegetables or the corn might take a little bit longer to cook. So you wanna put those in first before you put in something like, you know, like vermicelli noodles that maybe only take seconds to cook. So, um, I think you guys know most of these things, but like, for example, like taro, taro is a root vegetable. It always takes a really long time to cook. So I might put like that. I might put some of my pumpkins, which also take um, a little bit longer to do. So in terms of the greens, I think that they call this, um, what is it called? Uh, water, I think in Chinese are called like tong cai or tong choy. Um, and there's a tricky thing with this um, in terms of the greens. and. I think maybe for January we can do like a greens week where every day of the week we'll, we'll do like a new, we'll like introduce a new Asian green to you guys. So if, you, if you like that, let me know in the comments down below. Um, <laughs> the leaves are a lot softer and a lot more tender than the tubes underneath, than the actual stalk. So um, you can definitely just put everything in, like it really doesn't matter. It's just like a slight textural difference, but you know, you can also snap these in half and then maybe uh, cook the tubes a little bit longer and the leaves really like 20 seconds maybe. And that goes the same thing with, um, these are chrysanthemum greens. And I, uh, somebody recommended this to me, obviously it's very known for hot pot, but um, they use it a lot in like Japanese cooking and I think uh, different Asian cookings, but I've never tried these before. And people have told me that they're, they're slightly bitter, but maybe you can also taste a little bit of chrysanthemum um, in it. But this is also one of those where it takes like seconds to cook, especially if you get them like young and fresh like this. And of course you guys know about bok choy loaded with antioxidants or whatnot. But this is actually, you know, it's a much hardier green compared to something like this. So this is something where you can throw it into the pot and even if you forget about it, which sometimes uh, people do. So sometimes this actually happens where like people will throw in the stuff that they like and then they'll, you know, continue eating and they'll continue talking and then, you know, maybe like half an hour will go by and you use that device where you fish out the food and you're like, oh, like this is, this is completely overcooked. I completely forgot that I put it in, but it's still, you just mix it in with like the sauce and everything. It's still, it's still gonna be good. This is one of those greens where, you know, you do have a little bit more time to work with. Okay, so my next round, my next category are going to sort of be like the meats of a vegan hot pot. So um, again, this is, this is really the, the, the stage where, because you're doing it at home, you can mix in a lot of like other like seitans or a lot of other faux meats or whatnot, but these are the ones that you can usually find in the hot pot restaurant.
one of my most favorite is actually um, is actually bean curd sticks or these bean curd knots. It's essentially when you make soy milk, you have this layer that forms on top of the soy milk and what you do is you take off that layer, you dry it and it kind of gives you like a nice, I don't want to say rubbery, but it's sort of, it gives you that kind of like nice sheeted rubbery uh, texture to it. And it's just, I, I love the bite of that. Like I love the feel of that. And it's definitely, you know, very kind of more meaty um, in my book, um, these two things. And of course, there's the different types of tofus that you guys can always um, order. And I've, I've seen these around. So uh, firm, firm tofu, obviously. Uh, deep fried tofu is an absolute favorite. So these are the tofu puffs. We've made them before. I can put that recipe um, down uh, down in the description box. But they're, they're fried pieces of tofu that have become really nice and airy. These are really nice because uh, because they're so spongy on the inside. They really like kind of absorb all of that broth. So it's, it's quite nice. It's quite flavorful um, that way. Uh, I, I brought some five spice tofu. I don't know if I've, if I've seen that before, but that's, that's something that can really add a nice meatiness to it as well. And then of course, when you're talking about kind of like meaty textures, um, mushrooms. Mushrooms are my absolute favorite. So uh, in the grocery store, you can get kind of like a mixed um, box like this of different like shiitake mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, um, gnocchi mushrooms are probably my favorite for hot pot because they're they're long and stringy. If you guys haven't had them before, I think I've seen them actually in most um, in most grocery stores, but they're kind of like long and stringy and uh, but they still have the bite of a mushroom, like the kind of like the slight like crunchy fibers of mushrooms. So it's it's quite delicious. I think. So here's the thing, I think with hot pot, because everything is flavored by this central broth, this central, you know, soup, a lot of things have a tendency to taste the same, like it has the same flavor. So the, what is, you know, kind of king of, of hot potting is really to get different, you know, items that are different textures. So that even though, you know, your soup base is the same, you're getting like, you know, different crunches, you're getting stringy, you're getting gooey, you're getting, you know, whatever, whatever. And I think that that's kind of the key of having like a really nice hot pot meal. Okay, so now our third and final category is sort of like the grains or kind of the fillers of hot pot. And of course, you can always have it with a bowl of rice. It is absolutely delicious that way. But these are some of my favorite types of noodles for hot pot. I'm gonna start off with my favorite one, which is like stupid, but weird. I love ramen noodles, but like instant ramen noodles. I don't want any of like the really good expensive like Hansai stuff. I love like, like a Korean or like maybe like a Japanese brand that's like thick ramen noodles, thick instant ramen noodles. Um, I just, I love, I love the texture of them. And so that's, that's like one of my favorites. And what I did here was, um, I essentially bought two packages of ramen and I guess the seasoning will be for later, but um, I just took two of them out. So they're kind of like this. Um, I also got some udon. Udon's also a big favorite. And of course, udon is already partially cooked, so it makes it perfect for hot pot because you can, you know, really just dip it in for a minute or so, and then these guys will be done. You can just, you know, put some sauce over it, put some of that broth all over it, and, um, and that will be really good. Um, I also, I have some rice vermicelli noodles. These are not my favorite, but I understand why you would have them for hot pot is because they're, they're so thin and they really cook up, you know, immediately and, and, and very instantly. So it just, it adds a different type of texture to it. And also for people who are gluten-free, uh, this would be, you know, obviously a really good uh, way of doing it. And then also gluten-free are these, um, these are sweet potato starch noodles. And they are delicious because they are thick, but they still have a nice bite to them. They're kind of slimy on the outside if you cook them a little bit too long, but it is a starch-based noodle. So again, it's going to be gluten-free. Um, and the only thing about these is because they are thicker, um, you're gonna have to cook them longer. So this is one of those things where you have to put it in, you're gonna be talking to your friends, you're gonna lose track of time. So potentially these can get kind of like very gummy or, or you could overcook them uh, quite quickly, but but they, they are amazing and they are really good. So just, you know, remember that and don't, don't overcook them. I don't have the, hold on. 
there's a couple of different versions of these. Um, one is kind of, where is it? it? This one's definitely too big for Hot Pot, but there's like a smaller version that's like this, where these guys are gonna be perfect because you can put in all of your noodles in here and then dip it in the broth and then take it out. Because what ends up happening when you put noodles into a pot that has, you know, your different, like your tofus, your meats, all of the noodles kind of, you know, like separate and they float around. And if you're just dealing with chopsticks, it's really hard to just grab those bits of noodles out. Or just, you know, the specific things that you had put in there and kind of like segregate so that people don't steal the stuff that you put in for hot pot because that happens too. So now that the broth is ready, I'm going to put in the uh, soy one on one side. I'm going to put in kind of like the more herbally one on the other side and we can start eating. Um, also make sure to wash all of your vegetables. <laughs> 